Good morning, Hopkins Community Church. Uh, wherever you are, wherever this uh, video finds you, um, welcome and uh, glad that you have tuned in. Um, this is going to be um, a bit of a different worship experience. As a matter of fact, I think uh, we probably will be experiencing some different types of, of worship and, and uh, ways of worshiping over the next um, couple of weeks. I don't know that. We haven't made any decisions about that yet, but um, it seems that this uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, is um, is probably going to stick around for a little bit. And so, uh, you know, we, we probably have to uh, do some things different, try some new things. Um, and that might not be all bad, actually, now that I think about it. Um, I think sometimes... Sometimes we think about uh, the reality of church and that it has to be a certain way in a certain place at a certain time, and um, and we become dependent on that. As a matter of fact, it becomes very comfortable for us, um, and it can become rote and it can become habit and um, maybe maybe something different like this is exactly what um, exactly what we need to, to shake things up. Maybe it'll make us appreciate when we can gather together more. Um, maybe it will, uh, I don't know, maybe it will remind us that, uh, that really our, the focus of our, our lives and our walk in faith needs to happen at home and that now we have the opportunity to kind of take it on as our own. Um, I don't know. I think God can teach us a lot in this time. And uh, in the midst of wrestling with anxiety and just overwhelmingness and, and all of that, uh, for me, it's been, uh, I, and I think, I, I hope it will be uh, a time of learning, um, a time of maybe seeing God undoing some things in me. Uh, that need to be undone. And, and I hope and pray that that this time, uh, in spite of all of the all of the hype and all of the media and the news cycle and all of these things that seem to constantly barrage us, that, that um, we will indeed be able to do exactly what we've been preaching through this Lenten season, which is make space for the Spirit to work. Um, and maybe part of that is us kind of being a little bit less comfortable than we were before. Um, so this morning, uh, you're going to get a, a bit of a different worship experience. Um, uh, below in the comments, so down underneath here if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you will see links to a handful of songs. You know, every every worship service we kind of open with some some worship songs and we sing and, and stuff and uh, and maybe you want to do that this morning. Maybe you want to keep uh, the same kind of general rhythm, um, and that's fine. That's good. You can pause this video at any time. Click on one of those links. It'll open up a new window, and you can um, you can watch that and, and you can sing along with it or, or uh, pray along with it. Whatever. Um, Maybe you want to watch all of them. Maybe you have your own video or your own songs that, that are on your heart this morning. And I would encourage you to um, to play them and, and listen to them and, and reflect on the words and, and spend some time in worship uh, yourself, with your family, um, with those that you're with. Um, this, this morning, uh, for this worship service, I would have used Psalm 91 as an opening. Um, and I think it's just so, so perfect for today. So you're going to have to forgive me. I, I, I've been on a lot of video calls and, and I know that the, the looking at the camera thing is, is super important. Um, but all of my stuff is right here. So all of my notes and everything, I figured we'd probably not waste paper. So all of my stuff is like right here. So when you see me glance over this way, um, I have a lot of just scripture passages and stuff uh, written down there. So, um, Forgive me for not always looking at the camera. <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah. So we'd open, open worship with, with this psalm. 
Psalm 91, the psalmist writes, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrows, the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall by your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my ways. He will call on me, and I will answer him. He will, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, there's a lot to that psalm. But I think that it is so perfect for this moment, not just because it mentions plagues and pestilence, which seems to be exactly what we're up against, but it is a reminder of a bigger picture of what we believe and that even in the midst of all of the things that are going on in the world, even in the midst of the constant news cycle, the constant barrage of anxiety-driven, anxiety-producing news things that we see each and every day. And it's like hour by hour, minute by minute. I, I'm, a, I'm a news junkie at times. You know, when, when things go on, I'm, I'm like glued to the, the current events of, of things. And, and this is just unbelievably overwhelming for me. Um, but to know that God is our refuge and strength, to know that he is our shelter and our fortress, and to know that ultimately, ultimately, even in the midst of this, whatever is going on, that nothing can touch us. I just hear the echoes of, of Paul's writing in Romans 8 there. Nothing, nothing, neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, including coronavirus, can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. I think those words are the words that God greets us with this morning. It's those words that God uh, gives to us as a gift to remind us of who we are and whose we are. So if this is a point where you want to uh, listen to some music and, and reflect on that a little bit. I'd encourage you to to pause, um, pause this, and and go there and and come back, uh, come back when you're ready. And I'm gonna pray. I invite you to pray with me. Um, just ask that God would bless, uh, bless His Word this, this morning, or whatever time I guess it is for you. Lord, your scripture says that our days are, are, like, are like dust and that we humans, like the rest of creation, are, are withering away and that the grass withers and the flowers fall, but your word, Lord, stands forever. And so, Lord, that's where we turn today. In the midst of our trial, in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of uh, a, a lot of, of things, things that we're not used to, things that we're not comfortable with, things that are scary, Lord. Um, all of those things, um, Lord, we turn to you and to your word, knowing that, um, knowing that you have a word for us today. It's a word of, of calm assurance, of steadfastness, because you are God. You are unchanging, and you are always, always reigning 
always sovereign. So Lord, accomplish in us what you intend to through your word today, that we may be lifted up, that we may be transformed, that we may be strengthened for the days ahead. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, typically, uh, on a Saturday night, I would spend um, I would spend a couple hours getting notes in order and, and putting things together and, and praying and thinking about uh, what I was going to say. It currently is um, it's five o'clock on Saturday. I haven't done that. <laughs> and Sunday morning, I spend time doing that too, as I'm preparing for for the service. And well, I haven't done that either. Um, as a matter of fact, about halfway through the week this week. Um, and scrapped everything that I had been working on um, because it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right for this time. It didn't feel right for uh, what was coming. And um, quite frankly, even on, on Wednesday and Thursday when I was feeling that, I, I didn't even think that we would be at a point already where we're doing online sermons and things uh, and, and not sure what you know the next day would bring. Um, so this morning, uh, as you're watching this, just know that you are um, you're getting uh, kind of my raw heart. Um, you're getting an unrefined version <laughs> of of anything that I would have preached uh, in front of you, um, and maybe that's what you would have gotten yesterday. Who knows? I don't know. You know, God works that way, and and I I fully admit that. But um, yeah. I have a lot of, of scripture and maybe a few thoughts to go with it. I'm not really sure yet, but we'll see what God brings up. Um, so if I'm honest uh, today, as I, as I sit here um, thinking about this, and as I have been thinking about this, I've been uh, very unsettled in my spirit. Um, I've struggled through this particular set of current events it's certainly different than anything I think any of us have ever experienced. There are very few people uh, alive today who experienced in any sort of memorable remembering capacity uh, uh, the the flu of, of 1918. Um, but I've been reading a little bit on that and it was terrible. It was awful. But they didn't have social media back then. So I don't know how that all, all that all panned out. But, you know, we're getting this constant barrage of, of news and... Um, you know, I know what I believe. I, I really do know what I believe. I believe that that God reigns, that He rules, that nothing happens outside of His will, uh, His His uh, willingness to allow it. And so, um, even something as rough and as seemingly scary and difficult as coronavirus um, is not something that's beyond God's control, and it's certainly not something that surprises God. Like I believe in God's full sovereignty. And I believe in his full ability to handle this, to protect, to heal. I believe that. And yet I honestly find myself wrestling against fear just all day long. It's just, you know, God's got this, God's got this. I trust, I trust, I trust. Oh my goodness, it's getting worse. Everybody's panicking and buying, buying toilet paper and whatever else they're buying. But God's, I know God's got this. I know God's got this. And just constantly back and forth, it feels like this tug of war in my spirit. I, I feel like what Paul is talking about in Galatians. You know, he, he tells the Christians, he says, uh, Galatians 5, verse 16 through 18, he says, walk by the Spirit and you won't gratify the desires of your flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. And I see that inside myself this week, especially. My, my flesh wants to worry and wants to control, wants to freak out. Um, and... And I don't think that those are right reactions because they're not trusting reactions. I think there's a difference between concern and prudence. Right? Proverbs 27 says that if uh, it's the, the foolish man sees danger and does nothing, that the wise man sees danger and flees. Right? There's, there's something about prudence that goes along with this. 
Um, and there's something about legitimate concern. Maybe it's not for the virus itself. Maybe it's for other things, other people. And there's, there's something about that. Um, but when that concern <clears throat> flips over to worry, that, that, that's perhaps where Scripture says, wait a sec, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do we believe? And Scripture reminds us, the Holy Spirit reminds us, what do we believe? What, <clears throat> who, who is Lord? If, if we believe that Jesus is Lord, as the psalm said, right? Nothing can ultimately touch us. Our salvation, our eternal destiny, everything about us is secure in Christ. And so I'm wrestling with that. I'm honestly wrestling with that. Um, <clears throat> and so what do I do? And that's, uh, that's kind of what I want to share with you this morning. What do I do? I turn to Scripture. And I start trying to speak against the lies of fear and the lies of worry and the, the arrows and, and the, the pokes and the prods of, of things that the devil is trying to put in my head and in my heart. And I, I, I combat those lies with truth. Um, and so I... I have no idea where you are. Like, I literally haven't seen anybody this morning, probably by the time you're reading this or, or reading this, watching this, right? Uh, and and it's entirely likely that I'm not going to see anybody today at all except my family. And, uh, and so I don't know where you are. Um, but what I do know is that what we're experiencing in the news cycle isn't abnormal for us as far as the way that things get hyped up and the way that that media tries to make things a really, really big deal and how it plays on our fear and it plays on our, our, our normal human uh, like things, the things that are in our heads. Like this is, it, it is like, oh, what's the word? I don't even know what the word is. Um, it's subconscious that fear Fear motivates. Fear gets clicks on the internet. Fear uh, gets people to watch news stations over and over and over again. Think about 9-11. If you were alive for 9-11, how, I mean, how long was your TV on, right? Because we had no idea what was going on. And we were full of fear. I was. Um, and so... The only way that I know to combat the lies that are in here and in here is through the truth that is found in here. And so that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, that's what we're going to do for the next few minutes. Uh, I'm going to read a whole bunch of scripture passages. Um, I'll, I'll put them in the comments below too. Um, I hope that these can be reminders. You know, when uh, um, when my wife, when Bethany and I were dating, uh, there was a time where we struggled with anxiety, and one of the things that the uh, that the counselor that we saw um, encouraged us to do was to uh, do something called truth cards, and essentially. Uh, essentially what it is, you just take a nine by, uh, or a three by five card, um, or a sticky note or, or whatever you, you can find at this point in time. I don't know if they're selling sticky notes or three by five cards as toilet paper yet, but, um, it might come to that. Who knows? Uh, anyways, um, you take a three by five note card and you write on it the lie that, that you are wrestling with, whatever it is. I'm afraid of blank or I'm worried about blank or whatever. And on the back, you write the truth because the truth is what sets us free from the lies, the chains. It sets us free from the things in our lives that would seek to pull us down, bind us down, to, to close us in a box. We, we speak the truth to ourselves because um, it, really it's gotta start there. It has to start there. We have to know the truth. 
Jesus says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Um, so Holy Spirit, speak through this truth, the truth of the word of God, as we look to the word today and remind ourselves of what God has to say in this situation. And so the first verse, the first verse that, that I want to just read is kind of going to be the, the theme, the verse for the next few minutes of what we're going to read, what I'm going to reflect on, and then what we're going to do about it, which is to pray. It's Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. <laughs> I read that on Thursday. I was like, with thanksgiving? I got to do this with thanksgiving? funny it's funny almost but scripture says that if we do this bringing our things in prayers and petitions with thanksgiving before god with thanksgiving because we can i mean we have a god to go to and that he's there and he's unchanging he's eternal he's sovereign Nothing, nothing about God has changed. Nothing about salvation has changed. Nothing about Jesus has changed. Nothing about the Spirit's present in our lives has changed. Nothing. He's steadfast. And an ever-changing cycle of events that we literally have no idea how to even predict at this point in time. The unchanging, steadfast foundation that we have is God. Peter writes in 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. And I think that part of this struggle for me is being willing to be humble, to admit that I can't control what's happening to admit that I am legitimately fearful for, I don't know if it's illegitimate, I guess, but I am actually fearful about what is happening. My job, having food, having to use leaves as toilet paper, <laughs> control, right? I want that control. And so it seems like part of <clears throat> casting down this anxiety is humility, recognizing that I'm not necessarily in control. Joshua 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It seems like a constant refrain for the people of Israel who witnessed amazing things over and over and over again. And every time they came up with a new a camp against a new problem, they're like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? We should have gone back to Egypt. Oh, we should, now we're going to die in the wilderness. Why don't we just go back and be slaves? Moses reminds them. They're standing at the Red Sea. They've just witnessed the 10 plagues. Pharaoh has let them go. Now they're at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's coming after them. And they're like, what are we going to do? And Pharaoh goes, all right, Pharaoh, Moses says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. It's actually, you can't really see it because of the blur, but um, that's actually what's written here. It's a reminder for me, a reminder to me, every time I walk out of this office, that the Lord will fight for me. It's the Lord that's going to do and accomplish what the Lord will accomplish and that I need to be a vessel of that. I need to be submissive, obedient, humble to that. And Jesus, when he's preparing to leave his disciples, and I included this in an email earlier this week, I said, 
Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away, and I am coming back for you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to my Father, for my Father is greater than I, he says. And then he says later on that I'm going to send the Spirit. And it's actually good for us that he goes away so that the Spirit can come. The Comforter can come. The Advocate can come. And the Advocate can be with us and dwell in us. The world doesn't have any peace to offer us. Let's be honest. It's fairly evident these days that the world doesn't have any peace for us. You know, it doesn't matter who's in charge of the government. They don't have the answers. Maybe some temporary ones. Maybe. But they don't have the ultimate answer. Jesus leaves us with peace. A peace that passes all understanding. But we have to turn to him. Look to him for that. You know, Paul writes in 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 1, verse 7 and 8. For the Spirit of God gave, uh, uh, the Spirit God gave us, the one that raised Jesus from the dead, we've talked about that. Uh, the Spirit that, that God gave us uh, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Right? Paul says, hey, Christians, yes, I understand that the emperor of Rome wants to kill you. I understand that you're facing rough times, but this isn't a time to slink back. It's not a time to go and, and hide in your basement. It's not a time to deny Jesus, certainly. It's a, time, it's a time for us to move forward. It's a time for us to mobilize as the church. It's a time for us to move forward because God didn't give us a spirit to be timid. He didn't give us a spirit to, to cower in a corner. He gives us a spirit of power, of love, of self-discipline. It's not time for us to, to be ashamed of us knowing Jesus. It's a time for us to be in a place where we are actively being the church. I wrote in my email today, right? You can, you can postpone and you can suspend gatherings in person, but you can't cancel church because you are the church and I am the church. And this is the moment where we can stand up with the Spirit of God and say, we are the church. We are here to help in the name of Jesus Christ. And this may be the moment, the moment where God does an amazing work in and through us to break down walls that have been built up so high so that people can see the love of God. So people can know the love of Christ. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, and all your ways of not. Submit to him, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Friends, I, I understand the, the struggle of, of uh, the, the anxiety. Um, and Scripture calls us, calls us in, in, the, in, the, in the strength that we only gain through having the Spirit in our hearts when we know Jesus, to trust in God. And to lean on him. Because he's the one that's going to straighten out our paths. He's the one that's going to guide us in the right paths for his name's sake, as Psalm 21 says. Or Psalm 23 says. He's the one who's going to open up opportunities. And he's the one who's going to be prompting. And we got to be ready for that. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3 says, This is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Right? The unchanging God, the one who spoke those words to a people in captivity, taken hundreds and hundreds of miles from their homes, the ones who had lost everything, literally says, 
it's not going to take you away from me. I'm not going to let you be burned by this. I'm not going to let the water sweep over you. I am the Lord, your God. found a verse in 2 Chronicles. Um, King Jehoshaphat is facing this incredible army in front of him. It's just an incredibly outnumbered. I can't even imagine, like if there was media at that time, what the, the media would be going just crazy insane about this huge army that, that the king is about to face. And God speaks through the prophet to Jehoshaphat and says this, this is is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. Right? Like this whole, I mean, he's outnumbered. I don't even know how much. Like 10 to 1, 20 to 1. It's insane. You know, they, they're surrounded and there's just no way out. And, and everything I know about war is like, hey, that's not a good situation. And God says, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. I wonder if God would say the same thing to the church, to us, to me, probably to me. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this crazy virus that's going around. The battle is not yours, but God's. I feel a lot like the centurion. The one that went to Jesus says, I need you to, I need you, I can't remember if it's his daughter or uh, his servant. But Jesus says, you have to believe. And the, the centurion says, I, I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. God, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I trust you. Help my mistrust. Psalm 27 begins by saying, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I think the psalmist has an eternal perspective here. I think there isn't a single one of us that goes looking for death, that goes looking for diseases that can harm you or kill you. There's not one of us here that goes, you know, looking for danger and, and things of that nature, uh, at least not in any, any sort of non-fun capacity. I know a lot of people do extreme sports and that's, you know, that's their thing. But on the whole, we don't do it out of a desire to be injured or a desire to be harmed or even a desire to die. The psalmist here has an eternal perspective of saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. In the same way that Paul says, nothing can separate us from God. There's a bigger picture of things that are going on. And I think that, at least on some level, when we open ourselves up to that bigger picture, it doesn't, it isn't us saying, well, you know what, I'm not going to prepare. I'm not going to go buy groceries. I'm not going to buy extra toilet paper when I find it because there's never any around anymore. Right? It, it's not, it's not a saying that we're not going to be prudent. I think that prudence can happen without fear, but it is us opening ourselves up to saying, well, yeah, you know what? I actually have a lot of resources and I know that my neighbor doesn't. And so instead of succumbing to fear and hoarding things, which, you know, going back to Galatians 5, selfish ambition is one of the acts of the sinful nature. And hoarding is, I think in this situation, probably selfish ambition. We have much. Many of us have much. And there are those around us who might not have 
as much or any. Kids that rely on school lunches that no longer have them. And when we engage this eternal perspective of saying, you know what, God, I trust you. My life is yours. My soul is yours. Everything that I have is yours. It opens us up and frees us from the selfishness that we could engage in. It frees us from the anxiety and the worry and opens us up to do exactly what Jesus says, which is, hey, whatever you did for the least of these, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I needed clothes, you clothed me. When you, you're, when I needed toilet paper, you gave it to me. You know, whatever, right? I know that joke's getting old by now, but hang with me, right? It frees us up to say, you know what? God's got me and he's got my family. And he is calling me to do whatever it is, to look out for my neighbors, the elderly neighbors that legitimately shouldn't go outside because this thing is is much worse for the elderly than it is for the not. What can we do when we accept that the Lord is the stronghold of our lives? When the Lord is the one who holds us in the palm of his hand, who should we or what should we be afraid of? The psalmist ends Psalm 27 by saying, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait for the Lord. Sounds a lot like what Jesus says in Acts as well. You're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. But first, go to Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait for the Lord. I'm going to I'm going to suggest that we do something together. Because even though we are apart physically, we are still the body of Christ and we are still together. And so I'm going to recommend this morning, I'm going to suggest what we were going to do actually before uh, our, our president declared tomorrow or uh, March 15 to be a day of prayer specifically prayer about the coronavirus and the things that are going on in this country in regards to that, but uh, prayer for ourselves and prayer for those who are impacted in our community and prayer that God would, for us, raise up in us the ways that he is calling us to be his hands and his feet right now. So, we're going to spend some time in prayer. Um, this might be a little weird, you know, being over YouTube. It's going to be quiet and you can hear the drone of the fish tank behind me or whatever. But we're going to spend a little bit of time in prayer. And then I'm going to close this with a psalm. And then you can close your time of worship together on however you, uh, however you would like to. Um, there's some extra songs right in the comments below and things like that. Um, but I encourage you, if you're with your family, if you're by yourself, wherever you are right now, I would, I would just encourage you um, to, to stop what you're doing. Right? If there's noise in the background, whatever, um, just let's, let's calm ourselves for a minute. Right? Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in time of trouble. Though, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way, and, mount, and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though, it, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake and they're surging. Right? That's, when all that's happening, God is our refuge and strength. We need to remember that. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in an uproar. Kingdoms fall. His voice, he lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us and the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease. 
to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Will you pray with me? God, you are our refuge and strength, a helper close at hand in times of trouble. And yeah, Lord, it seems like the mountains are shaking, that the, <laughs> that the, the nations are quaking before you, that, that the waters are roaring and foaming. There's so much going on. And so, Lord, in this moment, we have to pause, we have to stop, and we have to remember that you are God. That we are the sheep of your pasture, the flock under your care. And so, Father, we pray that you would help us to remember that first and foremost. We lift our eyes to the hills because our help comes from you. You are the maker of the heavens and the earth. You will not let our foot slip. You do not slumber. You do not sleep. You are the God who watches over us. You need no rest. You are our shade at our right hand. The sun will not strike us by day or the moon by night. You keep our lives. You watch over us. And so, Lord, we pray with the psalmist that you would keep our going out and our coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Father, in this moment, we, we lift up to you um, ourselves first to say, Lord, help us. Help us with our struggle, with anxieties. Help us with our, our, our wrestling with the things that are going on in this world. Help us, Father, to fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Help us to recognize, Lord, that you have blazed a trail before us. And that even in this time that seems so chaotic, you have opened doors for us to be your witnesses and to be your ambassadors. Father, help us to look to you. And then Lord, we also pray for those who are struggling with, uh, with their own anxieties those around us who do not know you. And Father, we pray that at this time you would help us, Lord, help us to uh, point to you. That we could be a source of your love, of your strength, of your comfort, of your peace in the lives of those around us. But Lord, that ultimately we could point them to your Son, Jesus Christ. And that through us, Father, people would come to faith in him. Father, we pray for the medical workers, our first responders, those in the hospitals, um, our emergency personnel. Uh, Lord, in the coming days, they are probably going to be quite overwhelmed. We pray that you would protect them against this disease. We pray that you would give them the strength to continue to move forward, the strength to get up and take those calls, the strength to go into work each day. Father, we pray for our government. Many people on many different levels doing many different things, saying many different things. And Father, we pray that you would give them wisdom. Father, help us to, to listen well, to put away political biases and other uh, other things that would, would cause us to resist, to, to stay back, Lord. Give us wisdom to know uh, what you're calling us to do. 
give them wisdom to know what they need to do. Father, we pray for those families who are deeply impacted by school closings, for uh, for parents who are wondering whether or not they're going to be able to go to work on Sunday or on Monday because their kids are at home. For kids who are so in need of a routine and used to a routine, Lord, uh, and that are completely thrown off now. Or for those who rely on the school system for daily meals. Father, we pray that you would open our eyes as a church to the needs around us so that we can give out of the blessings that you have bestowed on us into this community or to to meet those needs not just with your love not just with the message of the gospel but Lord also as your scripture says with the physical needs that we would be not just hearers of the word but doers that we wouldn't simply be spiritual Christians, but that we would be active participants in the body of Christ with those all around us. Lord, we don't know how this, how long this is going to go on, um, but we pray that you would work in this time and raise things up in us uh, However you are working, Lord, we pray that you would uh, make that clear to us in our lives and in the lives of those around us. We thank you for Jesus. And we thank you that ultimately, Lord, we have hope in him. A hope that surpasses all knowledge. A hope that is beyond anything that this world has to offer. Lord, we rest in that hope today, knowing that Jesus is on the throne with you, reigning with the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Give us strength, give us courage. Go before us and hem us in on every side. And Father, we pray again that you would do a great work through this church in the days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. So like I said before, there are some other song suggestions that are in the comments down here, and you can uh, you can go and, and look at them uh, whenever. Uh, you can listen to a few of them now. Um, Maybe, maybe they become theme songs for the next couple of days as we continue to face this COVID-19 thing. Um, there are emails and uh, things that have gone out. If you haven't gotten them, uh, I will post at the end of this um, and in the comments below, I will post uh, information on how to sign up for those things. Be sure to check Facebook. Often we're going to be trying to communicate well. Um, you know, we're working on giving options, giving as a part of our, our worship time. Um, you can send checks in the mail. Uh, you can sign up for our automatic withdrawal. Um, we're working on the potential of possibly using uh, PayPal or something like that uh, for online, online giving options too. Um, all stuff we're going to be talking about in the next couple of days. So um, thanks for for watching, um, for being a part of this worship service, I guess, worship time, uh, whatever we are calling it. And um, yeah, I hope to, hope to see you soon. But in the meantime, know that you are in my prayers and um, we love you all. And we, um, yeah, we just pray for your health and for your safety. And uh, yeah, we will Continue to trust God together and build each other up and spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Um, may the word of God dwell in you richly. 
know that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit is ours now and always. Amen.